All right, let's actually get into function notation. We've looked at graphs and stuff like that, but uh, here is an easy formulaic way of writing these things. So in general, if we're talking about humans, height is a function of age, something that we might say. Uh, depending on your age, right, your height is probably going to be different. All right, and we can maybe model average, average height compared to age and get a little graph showing that. You know, it'd go up for a while and then you have your growth spurts where it'd go up even more and then eventually you kind of level off and then shrink a little bit as you get older. Um, is gravity or something. I don't know, I'm no bot. <laughs> Shouldn't open my mouth and talk about things I don't know anything about. It's something like that. All right, so let's, let's kind of play with that and write things down. All right, so if we start with height, is a function of age. There's definitely a correlation between age and height. All right. The way that we write that, we write that H equals F of A. This is not multiplication. This is function notation. And this is literally pronounced F of A. And that's the function notation part. Okay, and again, as a reminder, this is not multiplication. And we have our independent variable. Independent is often called x. But it's not always called x. Sometimes, we, what if we want to talk about age? Let's call age a. Height, h. Maybe we want to talk about um, flowers, but F. Well, don't do F here. That'll be weird. F of F, we don't want to worry about that. We will be worrying about F of Fs later, but uh, not yet. So independent variable, also the input variable. Oftentimes it's called X, but not always. And then H is the dependent. It's the output. Right, the dependent variable also known as the output. All right. And uh, it's not multiplication. And who knows what this function is? Maybe f of a is some equation that we can do. Maybe f of a is not an equation that we can write down, but this is kind of what we're starting with, okay? Let's do an example kind of utilizing this and to kind of get us something more accurate to talk about. It's not example one. Don't be silly, Jason. We've already done an example. It's example two. So let's consider a function. D equals f of m. So again, this says that D, whatever D represents, is a function of m. m is our input. m is input. It's inside. Input inside the parentheses m is our dependent variable. And let's say uh, here, m is a month, and d is the number of days in that month. OK? So for example, if m is January, D is 31, because there are 31 days in January, I think. I also know that there are 31 days in March and December. That's when I got COVID shots. Um, <laughs> on the 31st, on both of those days. Yes, I got my booster shot on New Year's Eve. Anyway, so uh, yeah, if we have this function here, let's look at some stuff. So then, we can use this function. F of M... Pick a month, any month you want. January is equal to D. What is D? D is 31, because there are 31 days in January. And again, it doesn't matter which one is on which side. Right here, F is on the right. Here, F is on the left. It doesn't matter what's on which side of an equation. Right? You can always flip equations around, no problem. All right, and you can keep on doing this, right? F of... February equals 
28 usually <laughs> so maybe this isn't a function after all because sometimes it's 28 sometimes it's 29 because remember every input should have only an output only a single output so this is 28 and 29 it's not a function anymore but that's kind of splitting hairs we'll not really worry about that you know f of december would also be 31 and so on this is function notation I give you an input. I give you a month, December. You give me an output. You give me a number of days, 31. All right, and that's how we can kind of use all this together. Let's do another example. N is a function of Y. This is kind of weird because Y is usually the output, but here, Y is the input. It's on the inside, and uh, it just makes sense sometimes. Gives the number of officers in a town in year Y. Ah, so that's why it's Y. Y stands for year. The question is, what does F of 2005... Oh, Jason, you don't have room, you silly goose. What does F of 2005 equals ten mean or represent? Let's use our function notation. So input, that's the Y. That's our depend independent variable. That's our input. This is telling us, right, that y is 2005. Our output, the n, the thing outside of the parentheses, that is our output, that is n, the number of officers. So this is saying that when the input is 2005, the output is 10. What was the input? The input was y, which is the year. The output, shouldn't have chosen red. Red and green. The output is the number of officers. So we just connect all those concepts. The output is 10. There are 10 officers, or there were 10 officers. Nope. Be consistent with the coloring. There were 10 officers in this town in 2005. All right. That's our final answer. That's the answer to example three. All right. We got one last one. Different ways of looking at functions. Uh, example four. Finish off this video. That says for the functions below, write some points in function notation. So just relate these different ones, just like we've been doing before. F of X equals Y. It's very common. That's what we're going to do here. Part A, the function is going to be shown as a table. This table has a bunch of X values, a bunch of inputs, and a bunch of outputs. F of X, also known as Y. F of X equals Y. X is the input, Y is the output. And for this function, I'm giving you two, four, six, and eight for our inputs. The outputs are 0, 4, 16, 36, and 64. So all of our answers are going to be of the form f of x equals y. And again, x is our input, and y is our output. Again, Another way of saying that is our inputs are up here. 
and our outputs are down there. So what is this going to look like? Well, pick an input. Pick any input you see, and then I'll tell you the output is normally what would happen, but this is a video, so I can't know what you're gonna think in the future. I have a 20% chance, roughly. I'm guessing that you chose two as your input. Let me know if I guessed right. Two is your input. Well, then we just go up to the function, find two in the input row, and figure what's the output. The output's four. All right, so f of two equals four is what we write. Again, two is the input, the x, four is the output, the y. And you can do this with more of them, right? f of four equals 16. You could do f of six equals 36, and so on. And there we go. That's just function notation. Take inputs to outputs. Let's actually leave that up here. Let's do this for another example, too. Um, part B. It's going to be a graph. Oh, no. All right, we're going to... I'll bring back the graph. Why not? All right, let's do a graph. And uh, let's say here are... The lines and let's have a line that goes kind of do this is our graph what are some points on that line okay so what we're going to do is we're just going to look at points that kind of make sense here so you can choose a lot of points um you know there's a point here Point here there's tons of points you could pick All right you could choose any of these points and it might help if you wrote it as an ordered pair first this is right one and down one this is right three and up one this is right four and i'm running out of room and for all of these you can just write f of the input, the x, equals the output, the y. f of the input 3 equals the output, positive 1. f of the input 4, input inside, usually x, independent variable, equals the output 2. And you can choose more points. There's infinitely many points on this line, but here are just a few. All right, there you go. Enjoy your graphing. Nope, that was a different one. Enjoy your function notation, and uh, let me know if you have any questions.